What's going on YouTube? Today I'm gonna to show you how I keep my pool clean, keep it clear naturally. Now there's gonna be a little asterisk to that. I do use a little bit of chlorine, a very little chlorine. But before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out all my other pool related videos, all my channels, all pool related videos. When I started doing my research, I know I didn't wanna use a bunch of chlorine in the pool because who wants red eyes right who wants to smell like chlorine when you get out the pool and as you can tell here I have this little very little uh, chlorine dispenser see that there I put very little chlorine I take one little one of those little circle tablets of chlorine uh, I break it I break it in parts and I just put little pieces in there it's just like that little piece right there and that's really all I'm gonna use and I really probably use another piece uh, throughout the season. So that's gonna last me uh, about a month. And then I throw another two small pieces in there through the season. You may be wondering what that is in the middle of the pool floating. Now that is a homemade copper ionizer. If you don't know what a copper ionizer is, uh, I'm not gonna get too technical about it, but what it does, it naturally keeps out all the algae. It kills all the algae or it keeps the algae from growing. Uh, one of the two, I really don't know which one, but it does work. And if you've ever priced a uh, copper ionizer, they're about 150 bucks, go all the way up to 400. Might be lucky and find one for 100. They don't wanna pay that for this pool, so I decided to make my own. So it's pretty hot out here. Let's go inside and get this started. All right, so laid out in front of me are the things we need to make our copper ionizer. Now, the first and most important thing you're gonna need is two pieces of copper tubing. Next, you're gonna need some scissors and a blade. You're also gonna need a pool noodle. We'll get into that in a minute. You're gonna need a bucket with a lid. The smaller, the better. This is what I had available. And last but not least, you're gonna need a solar charger with positive and negative clamps and tie straps. Tie straps are very important. I almost forgot about these. All right, so your two copper tubing pieces don't have to have this end right here. You can actually buy a long piece of copper tubing and uh, cut it yourself to size. This is just uh, the cheapest one that I found. Uh, they had a, some longer ones. Uh, I believe they were a foot, but they were more expensive. Uh, so I just decided to get them with this piece right here. They're just cheaper, but this makes no difference really, this part here. Uh, so that's your copper tubing right here. You're looking at about, uh, I want to say 10 bucks in tubing. Pool noodle, you definitely need a pool noodle. This is very important. This is what is gonna provide our flotation for uh, our copper ionizer. You're gonna want a bucket with a lid. Now I've seen some people do it without a lid, but um, this is not gonna be watertight, but I mean, it, it is gonna provide some type of protection from the water. You could even seal it if you wanted to with some tape or something like that. Whatever bucket you decide to go with, uh, this is just what I had available. I didn't wanna go out and buy something, so using this here. And most importantly, your solar charger. Now if you don't know which solar charger to get, I will leave a link in the description where you can get this uh, on sale from Amazon. Depending on when you buy it, it's gonna run anywhere from 25 to $35. Um, these also include the um, positive and negative clamps. This is gonna be important. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. All right, so let's go ahead and start making this ionizer. Now this is gonna be very simple. What you're gonna wanna do first is you're gonna wanna make a hole right dead in the center cut these little flaps off here so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a tie strap right at the top here Gonna cut that down. And we're gonna put a tie strap right at the bottom. What that's gonna do, that's gonna keep these two pieces from touching each other. You might even wanna put a little spacer in there, but I mean, this'll work. So once you got that, what you're gonna do is 
You're gonna take two more tie straps. You're gonna put a tie strap on the top and on the bottom. So make sure you have them exactly where you want them. Now it should look like this here. So you have your tie strap on one, and then you have your tie strap holding the whole piece there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little piece of foam here, maybe about one to two inches. Put this piece of foam pull foam just like that and then on the back of this right here what I think I'm gonna do is looking at it now I can use hot glue but I think I might just use flex seal okay we're looking pretty good so far so the next thing is you get the idea of what I'm doing here we're gonna put another piece of pool foam on this side here. So pretty much, if you see in there, I mean, this is almost done. So now all we need to do is to add the positive and the negative terminals to each one of these pieces here. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put just one tie strap on the positive just in case it decides it wants to touch. Now again, you can build this to your preference. I just wanna show you how to do it. See, so there's a, there's a positive and here's a negative here. So I'm actually gonna turn this this way. So if you can see in there, When it wants to touch, it's gonna hit right there and it won't touch. This is tie strap central right here. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a tie strap to the top just to keep it in place so it's not wobbling everywhere. It doesn't look like it's going anywhere. I'm not gonna cinch this one real tight. I'm just gonna put it on there so it doesn't move. Not gonna move there. Now you're gonna want a bucket with some height because this bucket here, this bucket here closed perfectly. Look at that. There's your copper ionizer right there. Look at that. So now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these connectors together. Got that. Now these connectors, I'm actually gonna put in here. just to give it a, a little seal. Now I'm gonna wrap this with electrical tape. I don't know where it is at the moment, but I'm gonna wrap this with electrical tape just to make sure, just to give it a little bit more of a watertight seal. So I'm gonna put that in there, close this up here. A few more things that I'd like to do. I'm gonna add two little pieces of pool foam. few little pieces of pool foam. And we're all set, there's our copper ionizer. We even have a little nifty carrying handle there. So now let's see if this thing floats. It's kind of leaning off to one side. Hope it's not taking on water. Yeah, sure is. Sure is. Probably gonna have to figure out another way to uh, keep it floating. All right, so we have a little last minute addition here. 
I took the remainder of the pool float and wrapped it around the bucket there. And I put a few tie straps in between in the middle. I don't know if you can see it that well there. And just tied it around that bucket to make it secure. It, it, was, uh, it was leaning off to the side before I put that pool noodle in there uh, around it. And right there, I mean, it's holding perfectly. So, and it looks a little nicer too, just with that pool noodle around it. I have it there connected to my solar panel, as you can see right there. Since it's not 100% waterproof, I'll be taking it out each time we get in the pool. So there it is, guys, the copper ionizer. The most expensive part is gonna be the copper and then the solar panel. But even still, you're in under 40 bucks. And another important thing that I like to mention is the pieces of the copper, you're gonna to need to replace them. The same with the real copper ionizer that you're gonna buy from the store or your pool store or wherever it is. What happens is it kind of corrodes, right? It's releasing all those electrodes into the water. So when it corrodes, uh, you're gonna to have to put those new pieces in there. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out all my other videos. They're all pool related.